You're tuned into Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Tune in right now. Welcome, Fit Clubbers. We are back. I'm your host, Saka Smith, drum with my lovely co-host, trainer from a and Fit to Fat to Fit, Fallon Mercedes Brock. How you doing, Fallon? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Very good. Uh, how are things in Georgia? Things are, I mean, probably back to normal for you guys, right? It's been a while. You know, um, I would say half and half. Uh, some people, they're not opening their businesses. Some businesses are open. I was looking at the stats this morning. Today, we have 704 new cases of coronavirus in Georgia, which mm-hmm. I predict there's probably more than that because it's a five-day span of once you take your test. Mm-hmm. So that's just results from five days ago. So I am still being very cautious. Um, I wear a mask everywhere, gloves, um, and I try to you know, minimize my time being around people. Yeah, I just, I mean, I, I feel like the sense is people are letting up a little bit. And so that's kind of the tough part about it. Um, at least out here in California, it feels like people are kind of like, okay, it's not that big of a deal anymore. Yeah. And so I'm hoping it doesn't lead to really poor outcomes. But we know that we've had worldwide 4.8 million cases, 319,000 deaths. We've crossed over the 90,000 um, death mark in the United States here. Um, we found out um, in terms of updates that Moderna have developed a vaccine that looks very promising. Eight people developed antibodies. So hopefully that's some good news on that front. Um, Trump has threatened to pull the um, the funding from the World Health Organization if they don't come up with what he thinks are major changes in 30 days. So we'll see how that affects things. Mm -hmm. And of course, in in a a very odd story, um, Trump is now taking hydroxychloroquine every day (laughs) as a preventive measure. Um, It'll be interesting to talk to Erica about that. Uh, Of course, guys, we have a great show for you today. We're talking to Georgia Open Too Early. We're talking health, fitness, and politics with the Honorable Georgia State Rep, Erica Thomas. And we'll bring her in right now. Um, but yeah, so much to talk about. That, that was a, a quite the, the odd, odd news story. What do you think about it? Yeah, um, you know, I personally won't believe it until I see it because I know prior he was saying that we should use disinfectant, um, you know, take disinfectant, yeah. ingest it. And I'm pretty sure he wasn't ingesting Clorox. So yeah, yeah I, it's a little bit worrisome. And some people online have even speculated, was he telling the truth about it? But his doctor came out with a letter saying that they decided to arrive at that decision together? I think the reason why um, they decided to publicize that was because he recently was at Camp David. So Mm -hmm. he's, you know, being seen traveling. So he probably wanted to put something out there to be like, hey, I'm traveling, but I'm being cautious when (laughs) we're still not supposed to be traveling. I'm pretty sure he could do a meeting at the White House and not have to travel to Camp David. Yes, so we'll, we'll see what, what happens with that, but uh, hopefully we'll get Erica in soon, um, but we do know that we have an update on the Georgia numbers, as you talked about. Uh, overall, 38,000, over 38,000 cases and about 1,600 deaths in Georgia. It uh, yes, looks like yes. we got Erica in <laughs> a little bit sideways, but <laughs> we'll make it work, right? Am I sideways? Is it, yeah, I you're think sideways. So. <laughs> 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 At least in my view here, yeah. Yeah. If you can twist it just one way, half a way. So ah! no, not, not 360, maybe 180. There you go. Okay, perfect. we'll take it that way. Yeah. Okay, this way? Is this oh, perfect. perfect. That's yeah. better. Oh, I told you, I feel like those old people trying to get on Zoom. I'm telling you, I'm going to get it together. Well, <laughs> What's What's most important is that you're making great laws and having a voice for the community here in Georgia, not how well you can work Zoom. So, yeah. <laughs> And honestly, the ability that we have to be on Zoom to do this is like a blessing. So <laughs> we'll take it anywhere we can get it. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you so much, Chaka. And thank you so much, Fal. And you know, I'm just happy. I'm excited to be able to do these types of things from home. You're not rushing to a studio. You're not rushing off, you know, so it's great. Yes. And, and how are you doing as Erica Thomas, the person coping with the pandemic, not the politician, but the person are mentally, oh physically, gosh. are you? Do you have an hour or two? Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's, it's different for me. Um, I have a newborn and trying to kind of install in my newborn and my nine-year-old that mommy is at work 
even mm-hmm. though mommy's at home, it is. <laughs> don't understand it. Like she's crawling in here every five minutes. You know, she's got to have her diaper changed every two minutes. You know, my colleagues, I, I get on leadership. We have leadership calls all the time. And my colleagues, they're like, oh, there she is. Like <laughs> she makes sure that she's on every Zoom call. So, you know, it's, it's definitely it. trying to battle it out between having them and giving them the right attention and then trying to make sure that we're about to go back to the Capitol. And, um, you know, we have a huge budget. Uh, that we're going to have to slash in half. And then you've mm-hmm. got Kemp coming on every day and I'm trying to combat whatever he's saying. So <laughs> it's a lot. It's that. Yeah. I'm glad I can do it in my jammer. Right. <laughs> How are you feeling about going back to the Capitol? Are there going to be different behaviors that are taking place? Are you going to be sitting six feet apart from your seat mate? Or are you going to be in different rooms in the Capitol? No. Over I was just talking to the dean of the house, and we call him the dean because he's been there for thirty-five over thirty-five years. Um, he's been in the House of Representatives, and he was taking a poll to see how many people are actually going to come back. Because some people won't, you know. You've got some people that have had cancer and different things, and yeah. and um, a lot of people that are reckless, you know. A lot on the other side that are reckless, you know. I sit next to, you know, and I love him to death, Matt Gertler, and he's running for Congress right now, and he's um, he's been deemed the most conservative uh, Republican in Georgia. And I know he's not going to wear a mask. I, 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 I know he's not going to do it. You know, I know he's not going to wear a mask. I know he's, you know, because at, for them, this, this, this stuff is not really real. And our last day of session, thank God I chose not to come because the pandemic was there. And I, I knew um, not to go, but five senators got infected by one person. One person came to, to, to the job, had got, inf- had got tested on Saturday, was waiting on his test results. A senator, Brandon Beach, uh, was waiting on his test results, found out on Monday after he left the Capitol and already infected um, wow. numerous uh, senators. So, you know, it's a scary thing. They're taking some precautions. They said they're going to fog it, you know, our offices three to four times a week. And we've got 14 additional janitorial staff. But, you know, I just don't think it's enough. You know, they said they're not going to force anyone to wear a mask. They're not going to require masks. Um, to be worn in the Capitol and the public are, you know, it's a public place. You can't tell the public uh, that they're not able to be there. And I wouldn't tell them they're not able to be there either. However, I think that we need to take the, the proper precautions. And so I'm very scared about that, but I will be there. Know that <laughs> I will be there with maybe with a hazmat suit. I'm not sure, but. <laughs> yeah, and, and we know that Georgia is so important, at least in terms of opening up, because we're going to get that first um, batch of data as to what's happening. But there was a little bit of controversy because of these graphs that were released that seemed to kind of put the um, put the state of infections out of chronological order. And as a result, it looked as though, though there was a decline when there might not have been quite the decline that we were seeing. Can we trust the transparency now from the state, from Georgia, from Brian Kemp in terms of going forward? Because we really do need this to be accurate to determine our level of behavior. Yes. Yes. You know, they're, they, they're saying they said men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. And, you mm-hmm. know, the craziest thing is that these numbers are not going down astronomically. You know, we've mm-hmm. not had a 14 day decline, even the White House. And I, I don't agree with Trump, you know, on a lot of things. But when they said, you know, in order to open back up in phase one, you need to have a 14 day decline. Mm-hmm. And it's too much too soon. We did. We did not see a 14 day decline, but we opened back up. I think that. Um, we opened back up prematurely, but I think a lot of the reason is because of, you know, a lot of the Republican base. I mean, <laughs> it's it's out there. You got to look and see. I mean, it, it, you don't have to have a flashlight to see how angry they are if you don't reopen. Look at Michigan. You know, you see they they came to the Capitol with with their guns toted and uh, ready to, to rally because, you know, they didn't want to reopen. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that same thing would have happened if he didn't make that decision. And I'm not saying that that's a good enough reason to put our lives in, in danger, but that's his base. And that's what he's basing his things off of. And, you know, there was one of my senators uh, that said one, you know, the same things. He, and he was actually infected with with a COVID-19 with, by one of the senators. But he said, and I quote, um, that one local business is equivalent to one life. So if a local business, is, a local business loses their business, it's equivalent to losing a life. So for, for him to say that, oh, wow. then yeah, Senator Thompson. So if for him to say that, um, then you can understand where I am with the, my colleagues and how they feel uh, about Georgia reopening because, you know, humanity is not at the top of the list uh, for, for their party. And, you know, I talk a lot about their party, but I'm not even going to say about their party because some of the people in the party don't feel that way. But, but for the top, top at leadership, 
um, that are trying to reopen us and reopening gyms and and and, and restaurants and the restaurants are packed. Shaka, they Ooh. are packed. You no, know, pal, I, I know you've seen it. You know you yeah. seen on Instagram. They're <laughs> packed out. People are jamming. I can't even imagine being at a restaurant and somebody you got you have people have to for dine in. Yeah, for dining, but, they're packed out. Let me tell you, I went to the grocery store yesterday. Me and my husband, we both have our masks on. And we were going down one aisle and there was a woman in front of us and the smell of the aisle, I forget what aisle it was, but it had like a strong smell and she sneezed, didn't even cover her mouth. (laughs) And she was just like, oh, this aisle stinks, but didn't even cover her mouth. And I'm just like, this is the recklessness. If you're going to go outside, at least, you know, cover Cover your mouth if you're not wearing a mask. But obviously, there's people who just don't care. They don't, how, care how, they don't think they don't think that this is real. Yeah, and, and I know in Florida, even I, I think one of the, the ladies responsible for the pandemic response, she got relieved of her position because she didn't want to change the numbers to make it look a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And so, how do we hold like these governors? How do we hold them accountable now? You know, not later when you know the numbers have already been borne out. Is there a way to hold them accountable today? Yeah, it's a it's a way it's a, it's a way to hold them accountable today. But let me just say this though before I talk about the way for today. Remember, they say voters their their memory is only about six months. Remember this when it's time to vote for him again. <laughs> people will forget this. Yeah. They will forget how. Well, I don't think people will forget because I think long in long run we're going to be in a, a huge uh, economic downfall. But people may forget what some of the things that he did. But the biggest thing is that people can call their elected officials. And, and I think that people think that if I, if I call my elected official, they're not gonna pick up or they don't even really care, little old me, you know. But I'm telling you, I have been elected for six years. And, you know, other than when I'm something huge in the media, okay, um, my constituents, you know, you might, you might have 20 calls, mm-hmm. six years. Yeah. So yeah, you just I, imagine um, the, the 20 people that call, they're gonna get stuff done. Yeah, well, I'm gonna yeah, do what yeah. they need to do. <laughs> I remember being at the Capitol with you and hearing the phone ring and your secretary is like, we're getting a lot of calls about this. And you were like, okay, write those numbers down, write the the names of those people. So it's true what you're saying. You actually will call people back. Or I'll, you you see me, I'll grab the phone. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to them right now. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And what I also love, I just realized you were the first elected official that's out of foster care. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Woman. Yeah. Yeah. Woman. And so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to let you ask your question. You know, I'm a top of politician. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I know that now in the pandemic, there's been some concern about uh, the foster care system and that it's the strains on the foster care system because a lot of children as a, re- a result of abuse and being at home now are going into the foster care system, but a lot of people aren't signing up because, you know, stay at home. Uh, is, is there a way to address that? Is that an issue in Georgia as well? Yeah, everywhere, everywhere. It's a scary thing. You know, I couldn't even imagine being being a foster child in this uh, era, you know, when your caseworker really can't come see you as much um, to check on you or if you're in an abusive home or even if you're not even in foster care. Um, if, if you're just in an abuse, if you're abusive home, your, your parents are abusive or whatever, and you have to be at home every single day. You know, when when before I went into foster care, school was my haven. That was my thing. School, I had straight A's. I hated home, couldn't stand home, but I had straight A's. I was class president. I was president of the bulletin board committee. I bet you didn't even know your high school had a bulletin board bulletin committee. Board committee. Yeah. Yes. So school was my haven. And a lot of kids that are in abusive relationships, I mean, not relationship, relationships too, yeah. but in abusive relationships with their parents or foster parents, um, that's their school is their haven. That's their only way out. And so I'm, I'm very scared at this moment. And this month, May, is foster care month. And so, you know, a lot of light, and I appreciate that question, Chaka, a lot of light needs to be, be shined on that because, you know, and what is the solution to that? What can we really do? You know, we can't go into these homes like we want to. We, you know, it, it, it's a very scary thing. Yeah, I was wondering, are, are states setting up commissions or, you know, people to look at the, the fallout from the pandemic? You know, one of them being foster care. Like, are they looking at these different things that could be problems as, as a result and trying to address those in any way? Well, you know, I hate to say it, you know, you know, people like me and you are thinking about these type of issues, but a lot of people aren't. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of people aren't. And this this issue is something that I will make sure that we try to highlight when we go back to the Capitol. But I'm just telling you, it's a it's it's scary, Shaka. But a lot of people are not really thinking about that issue when their job is they're losing work, you know, mm-hmm. or, you know, they they don't know how they're going to put food on the table or different things. It's, it's hard for other people to even think about, you know, how I can help someone else or, you know, even the government to think about how I can help, you know, this, this, these children when they have the budget to think about. So it takes people like you and me to kind of shed the light on that. But I think that that is something very important um, that when we go back to the Capitol, we're going to have to shine a light on that because I even believe there's going to be a lot of budget cuts um, to the foster care system. Uh, the foster care system, teachers are going to be, be furloughed, furloughed. I hate to say it. Um, mm-hmm. and, 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 and retirement. Retirement's the fir- I'm on the retirement committee. Don't ask me why I'm on the retirement committee. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the retirement committee has been meeting. We had already, in the beginning, cut the budget. Um, mm-hmm. About $148 million, $48 million or whatever in the, in the beginning, because they knew this was coming. Trump had already met with the governors. He, he didn't say it was this, but they yeah. had already said something was going to happen. And the, the biggest brunt of a lot of state um, budgets is retirement, pensions, things like that. That's like the like the biggest chunk. And so a lot of people's retirements and, and are going to be looked at when it comes to this. I, I, I hate to say it. And how about for the fall? I know a lot of parents are always concerned about um, the lunch, the school lunches, as you mentioned, school can be a haven, but a lot of kids rely on that for that one meal a day. Are they addressing it in Georgia? Yes. Yes. So I hate to say this, but in the first week we were, I mean, and and, and Fowl knows this, uh, the first week that the kids were out, there was like, in my county, no, they, I don't know what, I don't know what their heads were chopped off. I don't know what the county was doing. It was so frustrating. So I had to step in and a couple of other organizations, we had to, I mean, I have title one schools. I have all title one schools. So that means that they're 90% free and reduced lunch in my district. And so I had to jump in and make sure that these kids were getting food every, you know, we were going out to the trailer parks and passing out food, um, you know, had a sign that said free lunches for the kids to come and people were coming, you know, back and back, back. So, and we opened up a couple of different schools um, to make sure that the kids were, were getting the food. And then the, then the, then the county said, ding, wait a minute, we need to be helping to feed the kids. And so they were able to put some finances in there. And then there's 138 million from the CARES Act um, fund that was given to our county. And a lot of that money, um, some of that money goes towards those those programs, those school lunch programs. And so I'm, I was just on the phone with my commissioner yesterday fighting for these organizations that stepped in first mm-hmm. for them to get the money because we know if they had more, they would do more than the organizations that are just at the brunt. Like, Dean, let me just figure it out right now. When these people have been on the ground, they deserve that money. Yeah, yeah I have a question. So um, Memorial Day is next weekend. So we know a lot of the public pools here in Georgia will be opening up. Um, do you foresee a spike now with COVID-19 with children? Because right now there's not a lot of children who have it, but what's concerning is being in the pool. Yes, the pools are chlorinated, but I feel like the interaction in the pools, you're not going to wear a mask swimming. So do you guys have anything in place when it comes to the pools opening? The easy answer is no. (laughs) The easy answer is no. Um, the, the scary thing is that I, I saw a statistic that said uh, it takes 15 minutes. Chlor- chlor- chlorine or whatever can kill it within 15 minutes. Um, so, you know, that's a lot, long time when you've got kids jumping in and out of the pool and, and things like that. Um, it's a very scary thing. And so I just saw this morning that our, our parks and recreations um, is opening back up. And I don't really... Uh, have a, a, a um, an answer to that. What I would say is that, you know, there should be some precautions in place. Our county commission is going to meet um, next week about I mean, this week, I believe they're meeting this week about some of those things and, and taking those precautions. But really all you can do is urge people uh, to do go by these guidelines, but there's nothing as far as forcing people to uh, make sure you have your mask, make sure you're, you know, washing your hands, Make sure you're not touching your eyes. You know, with you're in close proximity like this, there's really nothing that we can do or say to people that want to get out the house. And the kids have been in the house um, for, what, eight weeks? There's nothing really uh, that we can say. But I, I will say this is something that we are working on 
Kemp has said that summer camps are going to be reopening. And, and that's something that we're very scared mm -hmm. of. If you close schools out to the end of the year, but mm -hmm. you're opening up summer camps. So we are looking at some precautions and things that we can provide the summer camps with um, that are going to have all of these, these kids there. And you can just imagine how many kids are going to be at these summer camps. Um, and I, I think right now everyone's looking for a way to boost their immunity to make sure they're healthy and safe. Um, but, but we did get from President Trump that he is taking hydroxychloroquine as a preventative measure every day. Um, just you know, to, to clarify, or at least to get some different viewpoints, um, what do you think about um, him taking that or anyone taking that as a preventive measure? You know, <laughs> this man is just, he's deplorable. I, I, I don't even know where to start when it comes to him. You know, it went from drinking disinfectants and, you know, they're, they're great, they're awesome, <laughs> to now he's taking a malaria drug, you know, and that has a severe side effects. You know, all I can say is that people don't understand how severe it is when you have the president of the United States of America saying these things. And people might say, oh, well, nobody's dumb enough to do. When the president says these things, people go and do it. After he said the disinfected thing, I know you read the story, 30 New York, 30 people from New York did that. They were yeah. had to go to the hospital from drinking disinfectant. And so I'm so, I'm glad that it was a lower number, um, but any life is, 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 a, is too much. And so, you know, it's deplorable that he says these things. You know, I've worked with politicians like him. And, you know, it's just like when, you know, you, you tell them something that might work and then they run out the media and they're like, this is it. That yeah. that's him. That's exactly yeah. what he does. You know, we're going to look into this. We're going to look into this malaria drug. Maybe it'll work. I'm taking it every day now. That's yeah. what that's the person that he is. And so I, I just couldn't imagine being his staff. I could yeah. I yeah. Could be his staffer. <laughs> I could imagine it. I mean, <laughs> this, this is what I don't understand is. You know, I understand he's our president, but I don't think he should be at the forefront holding these press conferences talking. He's not a doctor. He's not a scientist. You know, what he knows is business. And I feel like, you know, if you want to talk about what we're going to do in terms of opening up businesses or sending out checks, you know, that's fine. But I just feel like people want to look to him for all answers. And he obviously cannot provide that. I feel like you know, we should be listening to Dr. Fauci or other yep. doctors or scientists or other people who have statistics um, instead of him. Well, yeah, a number of people asked the president to put the CDC back in place for um, delivering these press conferences, which yeah, you know, exactly. took that over because he wanted to be front and center. Um, but, you know, that's he part, part of what we've gotten. He loves this. He just loves, loves, loves this. Giving us wrong information <laughs> well, every single day. And, and of course, and uh, Nancy Pelosi style, as she addressed this, um, she did actually talk about two important risk factors. And she mentioned that Trump shouldn't be taking it because it's not approved by the FDA for the use that he's taking it for. And because he's had a greater risk factor because of his age and because of his weight, um, which she believed, she described as morbidly obese. Um, but those are actually, I mean, Nancy Pelosi is just out there right now. She's, you know, she's really targeted um, and using the language of Trump against him many times. But she did target two very real, um, real underlying conditions. And I know that you're working with Big Girls Move as well. What are you doing in that arena? And how is your own physical fitness going? Wow. Well, thank you for that question. You know, I think that, you know, minorities, our community, I mean, I don't think that, I mean, the statistics is out there, you know, our, you know, minorities, we're, we're obese and we have a lot of heart problems. And so I think that's a lot of the reason why you see 80% minorities are, you know, the ones that are, you know, contracting this disease in, in, in more severe um, ways and conditions. And so what can we do to help? And I think the biggest thing we can do is, is offer people to have free trainings and, and to give them, give it to them, put it in their hands, in their laps and, yeah. and hope that this is uh, what they take. And so I'm, I'm very excited about partnering with Big Girls Move. You know, we have a great team. Uh, Tim Fontaine is my good friend and he's he does the filming and everything for them. He made me look good on film. I try to do a little workout. And so mm -hmm. I try my best to, to stay fit. 
I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about foul for a little second. Uh, <laughs> foul. I charged foul when I was pregnant. I said, you have to get me back right when I have this baby. And she has been on me all day, every day. She sends me videos. She tells me what to eat and all these different types of things. And I just feel, I look at her, I'm like, how do you know all this stuff? I don't understand, you know, this, if this hormone, you eat this and this on my life, what? I, I don't even need to do anything. I can't do anything, you know? So it's a great thing to have a great friend like Val because she keeps me, you know, working out and in but the But I am so proud of you. You have lost like, I think like 50 pounds now yeah. since the baby. Yeah. You are looking incredible. And Thank you know, you. to do this while having a newborn, while being a legislator, while having a nine-year-old, while being a wife, while being a friend, like it, it's, I love that you're not only like talking it, you're, you're, you know, promoting it, but you're doing it yourself. And there's lot, not a lot of people who are doing that. Well, thank you so much. I just try to, you know, work out, you know, as much as I can. And I think the biggest thing too is, is consistency. I try my best to do is not to like kill myself in a workout. I just try to do like 10 minutes. If you can do 10 minutes, Erica, then, you know, you're good. You know, do two 10 minute hit workout, you know, do it, fall on the floor, get back up and call it a, I mean, plus when you have kids, they only gonna give you 10 minutes anyway. She, she in, in 10 minutes, she's like, mommy, knocking at the door, crawling in here. So I, I'm surprised. I need to go check on them. They too quiet right now anyway. But um, I, you know, 10 minutes a day and then low carbs. I try my best to um, not to eat that many carbs because I know myself. I mean, you just have to know yourself. I know myself. I can eat, you know, a, a sandwich and, you know, a piece of chicken that's fried and gain five pounds. You know, you have to know yourself and know your body. And so I'm just learning more and more about my body as I get older and what I can and can't eat. And one more thing that I will say that I do, and this is probably not good, but I get on the scale every single day, like every single day. I no, no, but that studies show that it holds you accountable when you step on the scale every day. You know, for some people, their weight doesn't fluctuate as much, so they don't need to. But me personally, I step on the scale every day. You know, you don't have to track it every day, but if you're constantly going up every day, you know what you're doing needs to be, you know. <laughs> <High enough. laughs> That's exactly how I know. I'm like, oh, okay. It was that chicken you ate. It was that good <laughs> that you ate. Oh, and now I'm vegan. I'm vegan what? now. Oh, so amazing. This month. We'll see. We'll so, see how it goes. This Erica, is awesome. Shaka is vegan. And yeah. I know. I know you and I, Erica, discussed, you know, once you saw a certain documentary on Netflix and you realized that this coronavirus is, is Zootonic. That Zootonic. To come from <laughs> bats, that yeah. you're no longer eating meat. So how is the transition from eating meat to not eating meat been? And have you seen um, a quicker weight loss sense or a difference in your body? How you feel? So I, 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 um, I would say the transition has not been that bad. I grew up Seventh Day Adventist, so we always ate a lot of vegetarian meat, you know, vegetarian food, you know, a lot of different like Morning Star um, stuff. So I know how to cook it, you know. So it wasn't just like a drastic like, oh God, what do I eat? You know, am I just gonna be eating spinach? Like I need <laughs> gardini. I think it's gardini yeah, or Gardine's a couple amazing. other. Yeah. You know, I can't be shot in the mouth. You know, they're they're not paying for nothing. You know, so I can't be shot in the mouth too much, but. You know, a couple of different um, options that that I love, and um, they have like this fish fillet that tastes like I mean, just like fish. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the vegan wings. And then shout out to my girl Pinky from Slutty Vegan. I love her food. Um, so I eat, I eat. I mean, but really, is not as good because I eat those French fries. So let's not even talk about that. But anyway, <laughs> I, the transition has not been as hard. It has not been as hard because I have a lot of people around me that are vegan. My mom is vegan. My sister is vegan. So they tell me what to cook, how to cook it. And I love salad and vegetables. So it's not been that, that bad. Now, as far as the scale, have I seen um, a difference? I would say, I don't really know because I'm doing so much other things, other things. So yeah. I don't know if it's the vegan that's doing it or it's like not eating carbs and working out every day. So <laughs> I don't know. I guess I take it, make a couple months and then maybe I'll know. Well, you know, I think that's actually key that you don't know, because it's always a combination of everything you're doing. We always want the one thing to be it. It's never just one thing. It's everything that we do. So I think that's actually key. You're right. 
Um, what I want to know now is voting, because here we are, you got an election coming up. Are we going to be able to vote in person? Are they going to be doing mail-in voting? Uh, how and are we going to be able to get the message out to communities to vote the correct way, whatever way is going to be allowed? You know, Shaka, this is an unprecedented time. And I am very scared about this election. Not for me, because in name of Jesus, I'm going to win. Um, <laughs> but I'm very scared about, you know, how it's going to turn out. You do not know. You have no mm -hmm. idea. Um, let me just take it back for you. You know, when when Stacey Abrams ran for, for office, we had probably my primary area in 2018. I probably had 2,000 more people than actually vote. And the scary thing about that type of thing is that you have people that are coming to vote that have never voted before and they don't know who to vote for. They're just mm -hmm. voting because they want to vote for Stacey Abrams. And so whoever, wherever you fall on that, you know, you fall. Wherever the cookie falls, it falls. And so um, in, in this time, I kind of compare it to, to that. So like you have about 4,500. So say, for example, I have 2,700 people, which is and out of 56,000 people, I have about, about average 2,700 people that vote in a primary. Okay. Yeah. Um, in this election, 4,800 people requested absentee ballots. So you could just, you could just, uh, you're going to say about 4,500, 4,800 people requested absentee ballots. Um, when I checked with my um, data guy, he said last week that 400 people have sent it in. So you just really don't know mm -hmm, what's going to happen. Yeah. I talked to a lot of older people in my district. And to be honest with you, a lot of people say like the retirees, I say older people, but the retirees, they tell me, they say, look, I'm going in. I'm going in, Erica, you know, you know, I'm just going to wait outside and see when it's not a lot of people in the parking lot, but a lot of people don't trust the absentee ballot, you know, yeah. and, and so a lot of people are like, I'm going to go in, I want to make sure, and the good thing about this, um, we have a new voting machine, people don't need, a lot of people don't know that either, we have a new voting machine, and the voting machine, it actually prints out who you voted for. Okay. Good, so you have a receipt. So one, yep, so you have a receipt, and then you actually get to put your uh, put it into the machine, you know, I guess it, it's a whole, it's a whole different thing, but I like it um, because I like to see, okay, wait, may, do what I, did I actually, you know, click it? And I like to see that I click my name, you know? So, <laughs> no, you know. Is it, so is, people want to see, people like to see, you know, the validations and with absentee ballots, you just don't know, did they get lost in the mail? Did they give me, I don't know. So I'm not discouraging people to vote absentee, but I think a lot of people are going to go in and what I've been seeing for people going to the restaurants and all these different types of things, I hope, I think by June 9th, we will see uh, people at the polls. And is there any concern now, though, that, you know, under the pandemic, they'll close certain polling places, maybe where they don't want those votes, and they'll keep oh, yeah. certain well, they polling were doing places that. They were doing that before. They yeah. were doing that before. They, they closed a couple of my polling places, and I'm like, or, or, or they were they were trying to change them and shift them and couple do, do a couple of things. So, yeah, it's, it is going to be different. So, my early voting place, which mm -hmm. is probably my number one um, voting precinct, my number one, where mm -hmm. I get the most votes, where any, I mean, the most votes come out of that precinct, they're not opening it. So th that mm -hmm. one will not be open. Yeah, I know. And it's going to be at a new place that has, that it, we, we haven't had before. Um, so I'm kind of scared about that. Um, but I also do like though, it's actually closer in my district. So more people, and it's a walkable distance, you know, for okay. more people. So people might be able to walk, but if they don't know it's there, then it's like, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, and then it's closer to apartments, which are more transient and you, people that are transient, they don't really vote, you know, they're not, you know, they don't really vote. So in the place that it was before, it was in a, a place that wasn't transient where more people vote. So you just, you know, it's so many different yeah. variables. You just <laughs> don't know, you know, and, and then how do you campaign Chaka? in this type of climate. Zoom. You can't knock on doors. <laughs> yeah, right. You can't knock yeah. on doors. Yeah. You know, and Val, you know, I love to go knock on doors. You know, I like to go out there and knock on doors. I love to talk to my people. And there's, they love come, they love seeing me. Erica, there's Erica, come, come mm -hmm. on in. I got some chicken on the grill, you know. So I don't like this climate. I like to be in front of the people. I like to see them. I like to know that they're voting for me. You know, it, it's just really unprecedented times. I don't like it. Um, and I hope that we can get this together. Hopefully Moderna comes up with this vaccine or a cure or whatever, and, and we can combat this thing so we can um, not get back to normal because I don't think normal will ever happen for us again, but mm -hmm. at least get into a time where we feel a little bit more comfortable being around other people. Yeah, yeah and, and I hope that we're all at home, even though it's not a great reason we're at home, but I hope we're keyed into these issues now because we have the time to pay attention to them. Exactly. Yeah, nothing but time.
Yeah. Nothing but time. So, <laughs> Read and watch videos. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> uh, we have a little segment called Fit Club Five, where we ask you five rapid fire questions for the viewers to get to know you a little bit better. I think okay. Fallon's got those for you. Yeah. So um, the first question on the Fit Club Five, uh, last person that you texted. You. You. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you had to have um, a dinner guest, but it, it's your dream dinner guest and they could be dead or alive, who would it be? Beyonce. That was the first person that came to my I'm, I'm thinking you're going to say Obama or somebody I, It was political. the first person that came to my mind was Beyonce. So it was rapid fire. If I had time yeah, to yeah. Like, think about it. Um, see, I met Obama a couple times, so it's like I would want to meet somebody that I've never met. I love yeah, Obama, yeah. Four times, though, <laughs> I want to meet somebody I've never met, so it would, it would, yeah. it would definitely probably be uh, Beyonce, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, still Beyonce, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what would you want your last meal to be now, knowing you, you don't have to step on the scale, after last it. like about to die, like, last. yes, what would you want your last meal to be? <laughs> Lamb chops, I. <laughs> <laughs> vegan no more she, said she cut it out yeah. with right. some lamb chops with some mint jelly and a little bit of maybe a glass of wine no you can a tell bottle of vodka or something I know I'm about to die I need a whole I'm just joking I'm just joking my suspicion is like did she say a bottle of vodka <laughs> that's okay no one's judging what's right. your favorite junk food Cheetos. Cheetos. I don't eat them anymore because I I'm used to. trying to lose weight. The hot Cheetos were my favorite. Those were my favorite. Oh, <laughs> yes. I, love I, have a, I have a girlfriend who takes hot Cheetos and she makes different dishes with them. Like she uses it as the breading and the coating. That is just fattening as I don't know what. I'm so this mad I missed that before I went vegan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now if you were on death row, what would you want your last meal to be? What kind of question? <laughs> no, 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 that was the last question. No, what was your last meal? Your actual oh, last meal. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I read yeah. it wrong. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm like. You done said if I was on death row. <laughs> but, what was your last meal? Do I need meal? to know? Like, is there something I need to know? Because... <laughs> What was my last meal? My last meal was, oh, kale soup. Kale oh, soup. I nice. make my own kale soup. I put carrots, corn, uh, kale, and onions, and then uh, minced garlic, and then um, smoke flavor, uh, some agave, and uh, cayenne pepper, and then like some seasoning. Oh. It's you really want good. to post that? Re we have to post that recipe. Yeah, yeah really it's good. so good. It's so good. I went to the Ritz Carlton to eat and they had kale soup. And I was like, I can do this. Definitely it's nothing like theirs at all. <laughs> um, but but I was like, it was great. So I'm like, maybe I can make my own thing. And I put that smoke, that smoke flavor in it. Oh um, yeah. And we have the time. Now we have the time. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually reading this book um called Vegication right now. And um you know, I went vegan, you know, this Shaka, I went yeah. uh, raw vegan for a couple months. And then I went vegan for like six months before. Um, wow. And, and now, um, again, with the whole coronavirus, and then, you know, I'm, I'm, we've discussed before, as you get older, your body changes, your hormones change. And um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to end up doing it with you too, uh, Erica. Please, yeah. please do it. I didn't see Shaka. We're going to join the club. Like, yeah. I need, you need so, other people so, to be do with it. You yeah. need it. Mm -hmm. Shaka, you're just going to have to send us some recipes. I think like, oh, yeah. I just, I need some like, like I'm so used to cooking like meals. And I think when people think of vegan, they just think of salads all day and shakes. Mm, yeah. So I Anthrexia. think like, if I can incorporate more meals. I think I can actually live on it. Well, we have Tabitha Brown next week and she is like the vegan chef extraordinaire. Oh, she yeah. does everything at home. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I might we'll, have to squeeze on in and hey, listen to <laughs> yeah. we'll a lot of tips, a lot of tips. Uh, but speaking of tips, what tips do you have for your constituents going forward to stay healthy, stay safe? How do they navigate with all the different messages we're all kind of getting right now? 
Well, I'd say the best thing to do is to stay at home as much as you can. Um, there's nothing, you know, to combat this virus other than staying away from other people. Um, there's nothing on anyone's forehead that says I have coronavirus. You know, you, people can be asymptomatic. They don't have to be coughing. They don't have to be sneezing. Um, and so you don't know who has it. And so I would say the best thing to do is to stay safe and stay at home. I know that a lot of people are ready and eager uh, to get out of the house. And so what I would say is make your house a haven, you know, turn your house into a hotel. I'm building a home theater downstairs, you know, trying to do all I can do for my family and my, my little ones to make it fun for them. And so just try your best to stay home. And if you have to go out, if you have to work, if you have to go out, um, then use masks. Um, you can email my, uh, my office at erica.thomas at house.ga.gov. If you're in need of masks, gloves, or any PPE, and we'll try our best to help you out so that you can stay safe, stay healthy, because I love my constitu constituents and I need you to stay here <laughs> on this earth. And so that's what I would say. Well, we've got to thank you so much for that. Thank you for joining us. This is incredible. Yeah, thank you so much, Erica. Oh, no, it. this was so much fun. You all going to have this back. After I lose 50 more pounds, you're going to have to have me yeah. back. After you win that then, race, yeah. If I lose 50 more pounds, I'm standing up the whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. <laughs> well, please, everybody, follow me on Instagram. It's yeah. it's Erica Thomas. That's it's Erica Thomas. Um, it's in front of Erica Thomas, okay? And um, it has a blue check. So if you see any other body else, it's not me. Uh, please follow me on Instagram. I'm funny. I try my best to, to enlighten you on things that are going on. And we still try to have a little bit of fun on my IG. Have you made it to TikTok yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I've okay. got a TikTok. We almost got probably like 30,000 views. You're gonna have to go on my um on my Instagram. There we go. Oh, there we my go. My colleagues, me and my colleagues, and we, <laughs> we do TikTok. So you you yeah, go check you're, me out. You're, you're with the new you do the new school. You got the new school. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And Fallon, where could they find you online? You guys can find me on Instagram at uh fit with Fallon. And you can also Oops, sorry guys. It was low battery. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you can still hear me, um, you can hear you. Find me uh, fit with Fallon on Instagram and fit with on, um, my website. Awesome. You guys can find there me at Shaka Strong on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. On behalf of our BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Check out our Black Hollywood Live YouTube page for even more great programming and amazing content. And be sure to subscribe and like our channel when you do. I'm your BHL host, Nakia Monet, and you can find me on all social media at Kiki Boom Boom or at Black Hollywood Live. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined.